Hey, and welcome to part three of this series where we're doing survival on the moon. Today, we're going to be working on building a base here on the moon. Since the last episode, what I've accomplished is I have done quite a bit of mining in order to create this hole and then to essentially fill up our survival kit with stuff. Some things that as I was editing the last video that I realized that I didn't cover extremely well in the previous videos is our jetpack. So I'm going to go into the third person view by pressing V and I'm going to press X, which activates our jetpack. Space bar is how we go up and C is how we go down. And there's something that happens. We get some velocity. You can kind of see there's something happens that dampens us. And if we look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see dampeners are on. So if I fly up here, it'll hold me in place. If I press Z and turn my dampeners off, I'll fall out of the sky. The cool thing about dampeners though, so let's fly up and I'm going to start flying. I can press space bar and I can kind of correct. Whereas if my dampeners are on, whenever I press WASD, once I let go, it wants to stop. Whereas not, I can kind of, with the dampeners off, I kind of glide or coast. Of course, gravity plays an effect. Okay, next thing. these The reason I'm going over these is they're extremely important for when we do our spacecraft and any crafts here in Space Engineers. So, in order to rotate or roll, it's Q and E. They're the other ones. So, we've got WASD. C to go down, spacebar to go up, and Q and E to rotate, and then our mouse to look around. So you'll find that sometimes when you're going around with your mouse, you kind of get canted like this. And so you press E and Q in order to level yourself out, and you can fall. That was one thing I noticed that I did not cover as well as I should have. And something else that I noticed when I was in here mining, I fell and damaged. On the bottom left hand corner, you can see that my health bar is not completely full. So in order to fix this, we have this survival kit here, but there's meant to be, and you can see right there, there's a menu back behind here. With this particular rover design, for some reason they stuck a block over. So I'm gonna pull out my grinder, which is number two, and I'm going to remove that block just so I can see. And then I can press F and it recharges me and heals me back up. Awesome. So let's take a look and see what I've accomplished. So I'm gonna press K to go into the control panel and I can go into my inventory. So this is just the inventory of the survival kit. And you can see that I've got quite a bit of iron and nickel that I've taken stone and converted it in but there's this other button that shows us everything within the station. So I'm going to click that and I don't have any other stone. When I was doing it, just to kind of give how I was doing it, I would pick up stone and I'd walk back in here and I would dump that stone into the cockpit just because it was the closest and as you can see it got sucked into the survival kit which is exactly what we want. Um, off in the distance, there is a pile of stuff. This is gravel. I pulled this out of the survival kit. Early on in the game, it's not a super important resource. So I pull it out just so that it doesn't take up volume and mass within our survival kit. What our next thing is, we're going to go over the G menu, just kind of briefly for this first video. So we're going to press G and you can see we have some blocks in here, different things we can build. And if we go to progression, you can see this is kind of, if you set up a progression game, this is how you unlock things. As you can see, you have to build this basic assembler in order to unlock the normal assembler and various other blocks, including like batteries, which are right here. And you got like windows and walkways and just kind of aesthetic type of things. And we've got our basic refinery. So a lot of these things though are currently down here in our, our build or toolbar. So you can see we have a basic assembler, basic refinery, and some solar panels, wind 
uh, wind turbines in our armor blocks. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to teach you the correct way from the beginning, the easiest way to build stuff in Space Engineers. So we're going to go to the G menu for this. There are other ways, of course, but this is, in my opinion, when you're starting out, is one of the easiest ways to build stuff. So we can see we've got light armor blocks. If we drag these down to the build planner, or if we hover over it, you can see what it takes to build. On the right hand side, you can see there's the components, the steel plates, 25 that are required. So I'm just gonna add one for now because there is there is a reason for that. And then I know I need my basic assembler and refinery. So we are going to add those in as well over these build planners. Okay, and then is if we press shift middle click then it puts everything that we need inside the build queue so now we have the exact resources that are required in order to build the stuff that we placed in our build planner and then here's the next cool shortcut so there's two ways to do this that are easy so this is our space person or engineers inventory so there's a button that would draw components from the build planner so it will take those things and it'll move them over to our personal things or over to our personal inventory the other way is we just middle click and everything that is available so far as this is building gets put in my inventory so we're going to start building this out so i'm going to press the four button and as you can see we have our block here up in the top right hand corner, you can see how we rotate our block. So if I press home, it rotates that way and rotates and so on. It's We can kind of move it around however we want. But as you notice, as I got close to this other one, the block got really small. So there's two, block, two grid sizes in Space Engineer. There's large grid and small grid. So this is a small grid block and this is a small grid structure. And they don't interact extremely well, um, especially here at the beginning of the game. So, and the way you go in between it is I'll press four and you, so you can see it goes from small to large grid. And on the right hand side, you can see the things that are required for it. So like on the, we, can, we need one steel plate in order for the, the small one and we need 25 for the large. So whenever we're placing blocks though, we only need the first thing on the list. So that's either going to be a steel plate or an interior plate. So let's look at my inventory real fast. I have 37 steel plates. So if I place this, we're going to go back to the inventory. 36 now. And in order, so if I want to build this up to the max, it's going to take that 25. But I'm going to just place some blocks and you can see that they just lock together. And when they lock together, and they're one grid. So something else when we're building with these blocks is if we use the scroll wheel, we can see other things. So we've got like a slope panel, and then we'll come over here. We just kind of have some different grid setups for these blocks. I personally like to, as you can see, it's here, so I need to rotate it. I like to build a little bit of a ramp so that when I'm coming up, I can just run onto it where it is over this other side if I run up to it I can I can jump and sometimes I over jump it and sometimes if you get too close to it and then you try to jump it doesn't work very well so that's that and as you can see I built a bunch of blocks here and they didn't take all my steel out of my inventory so we're gonna press the five button now which now we're onto our basic assembler on the right hand side you can see that the basic assembler produces a limited selection of components um, but it requires ingots and power to produce those things which our refinery or survival kit produces these ingots that we were just talking about so we're gonna place this before we place it though you can see there's that yellow thing on the side so that is a conveyor port a conveyor belt port and so that is how the blocks interact together. So I'm gonna just click that down and it took one steel plate to do that. And I'm gonna come over here and kind of show you what that looks like in the case of 
The inside of this, oh, right there. So that is a small conveyor belt right there. On the large grid, you only have the one size. On the small grid, you have the large, which are these ones. And you also have the small ones, which is in there. And you can select those in the G menu. Um, conveyor. Oh, I don't have them unlocked. So, if we look in here, you can see these are the conveyor belt port or conveyor belt tubes and junctions that we have. And we need to build a cargo container before we can do that. So, we are going to come back over here, and you can see that we've got a list of required things. But I'm going to place some stuff before I do that. So. The other thing we talked about is this number six on our toolbar, which is our basic refinery. And as you can see, this block has two. So I need to make sure I know that I stuck it on this side of the basic assembler. So I need to make sure that one of those lines up. So if I stick it here, I can press the buttons in the top right in order to move it. Now I know that they are lined up and there should be an extra port right here on the end. So now I can click on stuff with my welder, which is number one in my toolbar. And it starts to weld things up. I'm going to come back over here and press the middle button. And so now the maximum has been taken out of the inventory of the rover and is now in my hands. And I click and on the right hand side, you can see it has everything that is required in order to build this. So we're going to weld this up, and there is, you can see, the hack functional line. Now my energy is low. When we are below the functional line, it is no longer functional. Whereas, if we go just up, I can go in here and I can look at it, and it's, it doesn't say incomplete, like the basic refinery. It is actually functional. Everything past that, which just takes those steel plates, because steel plates are on there twice, is just essentially extra armor. So like if there's anything that comes in here and shoots at this, it will have a, it'll take a little bit of damage before it is non-functioning. And I'm gonna just click on this. And we're gonna come back over here and it lists everything that's left to be produced. As you can see, I'm missing some components and so it won't go above that functional line. Well, let's see, that should be almost enough. I'm just missing some computer components, which are done now. Sweet. Awesome. So now I have these two things. These two, uh, we have our basic assembler and our basic refinery. They both require power, as you can see as I hover over with the welder. They require uh, power in order to run, at least. This one says in the description, this one also requires power. It's kind of funny, it says high voltage. But, so, we need to have power for this. So, we're going to move on to number eight, which is our solar panels. Interesting thing, number seven, our wind turbines do not work on the moon. As you can see in the bottom, it says O2 is none. Um, the very bottom in red next to the freezing temperature, we don't have any. So what am I going to do? So I'm going to add this to our G menu. We're going to add... Oh, we're still missing some steel plates. That's fine. It's because I created extra when I had the, the armor block, which are kind of like the basic building blocks. Um, so we are going to add a solar. We're going to build a little bit of a solar array in order to harvest some electricity. And we're going to come back over here and press shift middle button on the mouse. And it's going to almost add everything. What are we missing? Let's see. So we're gonna go back over to the solar panel, which we actually have down in the bottom, and I can just look at it. Um, oh, I cannot create the bulletproof glass out of the thing, which I talked about before is kind of the um, the armor. If we were to take damage, it's the first thing; it'll get destroyed easier. So I'm gonna press X, and I'm using my jetpack, and I'm going to place 
I can't place on that block. Um, partially because, as you can see across the top, it is not level. So some blocks have features that don't allow it. So I'm going to build this up. Always find third person a little bit harder to work in. So we're going to build this tower here. Oh. And I missed, and it's going to fall and probably break. No, oh, or not. So I'm going to pick up everything I can, and I'm going to fly up, and I'm going to place these. I personally like them sideways. It's personal preference, whatever you think is more energy efficient. I'm pretty sure somebody out there has probably done a better video than I have about what is actually more efficient and what is less efficient. Um, actually, it looks like the sun might be coming the other way. So... We are going to grind these down real fast. How we determine that is if we look at the way that the Earth over there, or the Earth-like planet, is got like this glow, makes me think the sun is going to rise over there. So we are going to finish placing these. So there are solar panels on both sides of them, and there is lights kind of like the batteries that we have not talked about too much yet. Um, I like all my lights to be on the same kind of side. We may not have enough resources in order to do this, but we will try. Solar panels are going to be the limiting factor, I think. So they take silicon, which I might not have enough of. So as you can see here, the bulletproof glass is required in order to finish it. And as you can see, these four lights are red, which means it is not producing any electricity. So this particular design that we are going for with the solar panels is going to limit when we can run the things on our base until we have a battery on our base that we can use to use these solar panels to recharge so that at nighttime like this, we could run our run everything on our base. Uh, yeah, we might be limited by what we have. Let's take a look. So we're going to go into our production menu. As you can see, the solar panels are just taking their sweet time. So what we are going to do now, while we're waiting for that to finish up real fast, we're going to throw in this video how we are going to search for ore. We talked about a little bit last time that the grinder or the drill has an ore detector built in. And I want to talk a little bit about GPS location. So I'm going to fly up here a little bit and we're going to look for a yellowish spot like we talked about before. Um, it's easier to look straight down on the stuff. You can see one right there. There's another one there. So we're going to fly down here. One over there as well. And as we get close, you can tell there's like definitely a yellow. And we pick up some stuff here. Once we have that basic refinery up and going, we can take these things we pick up and we can uh, put them inside of our basic refinery. So how do I keep track of all this? So I'm going to press the K menu and then we're going to pull up our inventory, which isn't very helpful in this situation. But if we go over to the GPS tab, I already have some stuff marked here on the uh, around close by the base. Whenever I'm waiting for stuff, I normally will fly around and I'll try to mark stuff. So how you mark stuff, I'm going to do new from current position. And when I do this, I don't remember what it was here. I know there's magnesium, which I don't have on my list here, which I normally abbreviate just mag. And now it's going to mark this spot. And in order, we're going to leave that show on hood. So you can see. So now it's the blue thing. And as we get away and we can no longer see the magnesium, 
Maybe. There we go. It still marks what is at that site. I'm going to come back and adjust this. Because there is ice down there, which is an extremely important resource that we will eventually need later on. So I'm going to add ice. In order to keep your hood not cluttered. So let me... As I start to get these, you can just see all these blue markers just everywhere. And it starts to clutter up really bad. We can go in here. And we can say, okay, I don't really care about this right now. I don't care about that. We're going to just turn them off for now. Just to simplify what I'm looking at. I normally like to leave my respawn pod on just so I can see it. Um, but gray markers out there, that means they're neutral towards you. They're not friendly blue and they're not they're not an enemy which is red and sometimes you'll see a red things pop Energy up low. um occasionally and they are people that will go out of their way and attack you so let's fly back top off energy a little bit other way easier if you want to sit in your your cockpit for a minute Awesome, we are going to grab our last little bit. Perfect. So now we are ready for the sun to rise. Okay, awesome. So the sun has risen, and as you can see, my solar panels are cooking. So they've got four green lights on each of them. That means they are producing full power. So what we can do... So now that we have our ore, I can take it over here and I can, I'm going to turn this back on so it looks normal for you guys. Come over here and we've got our basic refinery. You can see that the max required input is our 30, uh, 330 kilowatts. And each of them currently are putting out 250 watts. Or actually, sorry, 156 kilowatts. Um, the current output is like, how much are they actually of that 156 kilowatts? How much are we actually using? So as you can see, they're all producing about the same. I'm going to take this and I'm going to dump it in there. And instead of where we used to have to go to the production menu and add the... Uh, okay, instead of adding ingots, you don't have to. Um, it automatically just does it. When you put it in the basic refinery, it takes the materials and it breaks it down. As you can see, we have those resources. Now I can go over the control panel and or the production panel and I have additional things here that we can build. Um, some things like you can see this takes cobalt which we didn't have before and you can't get from stone. We also have our tools bar which allows us now to get the upgraded grinder, drill, and welder. And we have got some different guns that we can get and we can get tanks. And we have our consumables which is just ammo and our canvas for our parachute say though that we do get that how do we change our toolbar menu so if we go to the g menu and we go to block tools or sorry uh, character tools we can drag that down say that we wanted to replace it we just drag it down the the toolbar menu though has multiple menus so if i press Control 2 you can see down here it changed. I can press these numbers can, that's holding out control and pressing them. And then if I, you know, these are the numbers if you just press them on the keyboard. So if I wanted to change anything down here, say that I, well, I don't need a wind turbine anymore. But an ore detector would be really nice. So I can actually just come down here and I can drag that into place. And now we have an ore detector. This is a large grid. This is the small grid that we could put on the base if we wanted. The ore detectors are better on vehicles that move around when you're hunting down for resources. But 
that is all I have for you today. I just really wanted to show you guys what setting up our first base would look like and getting power. And now we have our basic assembler, basic refinery, and our rover, which are all capable of supporting us here on the moon. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.